Happy New Year! Welcome back to my channel and happy 2021. I think we're all I think we're all glad that 2020 is over. It was definitely an eye-opening year that taught me a lot and helped me really reevaluate what matters the most in life. And I think in a way, if we can look at things in the right way, in the positive light, we can learn from last year. I'm actually about to take down my Christmas decor, which makes me really sad. Before I put Christmas away completely and put 2020 to rest, I thought I would talk about my 2020 favorites. Some things are actually physical things that I discovered and some things are movies, shows, music, new discoveries or things that I really loved that I stuck to throughout the whole year or things that stick out or things that I still use and will continue to use this year so I thought they're worth mentioning. I love watching on YouTube monthly favorites and since I've never done a monthly favorites, I thought I would just do a whole year of favorites. So the first thing I want to talk about is eyelashes. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea probably, but I personally love really glam eyelashes. That's just, I like, I, I just personally am into that. So I used to spend my time gluing eyelashes onto my eyes and then ripping them off and I would have my eyelashes fall off. Gluing them on took time because they're, it's not easy and I would, it took me forever to get the hang of it. And then I discovered magnetic eyelashes, which is the most genius creation there ever was. You basically just take a magnetic eyeliner, you draw it on top of your eyelash, and then you just pop on your magnetic eyelashes. And as you can see, I definitely have ordered quite a few. My favorite brand or company for it is Glamnetic. I'm sure there are other magnetic eyelashes out there, but the brand that I personally keep going back to is Glamnetic. I love the fact that they have a ton of options for eyelashes. You can even go on their website and you can take like the eyelash quiz where you can put like what kind of eye shape you have. You can put like what level of volume you're looking for in your eyelashes if you want it to be more natural, if you want it to be a little bit more intense. And one of my new favorite eyelashes right now are the color ones, which I just ordered. The ones I have on right now, I know you probably can't even tell, but the ones I have on right now are purple. And I think that's such a fun little touch of color. I'm just a personally a big fan of Glamnetic. I will include the link down below. Everything I'm gonna mention, I will link down below. So if you're interested in anything, you can always just check it out there in the description. Another beauty item that I've been obsessed with is this hair iron that is a wave iron. I believe it's, it's called Bedhead Wave Artist. Obviously there's probably a ton of different brands and companies doing the same thing, but it's a wave iron. The way this iron styles your hair just kind of reminds me of the 90s. I'm not sure, I guess because I used to wear braids and then when I would take them down, it would look like that same style of wave that this creates. And I just love the effect. The wave that you wouldn't be able to create unless you put braids all over your hair or you use this. I try not to use it too much because obviously, you know, it's not great to iron your hair, put heat on it but I do love the hairstyle for it. I think it's something different and fun. One thing I wanted to mention that's one of my favorites, and I'm sure it was a lot of people's favorites, and I'm sure everybody was shopping on Amazon a lot this year. So obviously Amazon has been my number one source <laughs> for everything. Definitely if you have Prime, it makes life so much easier because you can literally just order something you need and then the next day it arrives. It just makes life a little easier, especially last year when we were kind of like in quarantine and we couldn't like leave the house to get anything we wanted. So I definitely had fun buying things on Amazon. And I think that there's about a few items that I wanted to mention that were like the top best items I ordered on Amazon last year, starting with my favorite item. So this is one of those massagers that you put like this over your head and then you put your arms through it and it is the most amazing massage. I ended up buying this for my parents for Christmas. I use this almost nightly, I would say. It is amazing. It really gets deep into your neck and your shoulders, and then you can kind of let it go down to your back. It wasn't super pricey, but it also wasn't like cheap either. It's. I think it was a good investment because I use it almost daily, and it really, really makes me feel brand new again after I'm done with it. I feel like my neck and my shoulders feel relieved. I feel like I don't need to pay to go get massages. This is the does the job. It even has a feature where you can turn on like a heat to it. So it kind of heats up the area that it's massaging. It really does give you a deep tissue massage. Surprisingly, the fact that it's just a little device like this and it's honestly the best purchase on Amazon that I made last year and I will just continue using this for until it breaks, I guess. <laughs> Another purchase on Amazon that's worth mentioning and super useful is Mickey fans. So I 
It doesn't have to be Mickey fans. I just, obviously, I use these at Disney. So I love the fact that I found these little Mickey-shaped fans that, let me see. <laughs> they're not the most intense fan, of course. Like, there's probably better fans out there. These are pretty standard, normal fans, but they're so cute and they're not expensive. I bought one for me and one for Jeremy, and when we are at Disney during the summer, and it's hot, and it's humid, which is not just during the summer, it's pretty much almost always, these little fans came so in handy, especially wearing the mask. It's like, it's humid, it's hot, it's sticky, it's sunny, and then you have a mask on, and my face was just pouring sweat. So this little fan really helped kind of like just alleviate the heat a little bit. It is um, chargeable and the battery life isn't gonna last you all day. You gotta kind of like pick and choose your moments. Another purchase I made on Amazon that actually has really been very useful and something that I've used on both this channel and my main channel, The Flept, is a green screen. We bought this green screen during the time of quarantine where we started filming on our main channel these videos of us missing Disney. So we kind of recreated Disney at home. So the first one, I'll link it up above, it was when we did like Magic Kingdom. So we used the green screen to kind of like replicate us being at Magic Kingdom and we were having fun playing around with it. And then we ended up doing the Epcot version and then we ended up doing the Animal Kingdom version. And then by the time that we were gonna get to the Hollywood Studios part of it, Disney opened up. <laughs> so then we were like, okay, well we could just go to Disney now. But this was a fun investment because I ended up using this green screen more than I realized. Um, all the Universal Yums videos we do on our main channel, we we like to use the green screen now to kind of like show what country we're in. Um, I've used it also on this channel too to kind of create like a nice setup in the background and sometimes I feel like I don't have a, like a really good background setup so I feel like it's nice to have a green screen and kind of put whatever you feel like gives you the vibe that you want it to give off. Even if you're just hanging out with friends or just doing Zoom calls, it's kind of fun to use the green screen sometimes and play around with it. So. Honestly, a really good investment. The last item from Amazon that I wanted to mention that's not like a physical item that I can show you is actually a DNA test, 23andMe. I decided to do it and I know there's Ancestry as well, but I ended up doing 23andMe. I do think 23andMe is cool because they tell you a little bit more about like health and things that you're like predisposed to get and I don't know, they kind of tell you more information than just your Ancestry. But the Ancestry part about it on its own is just awesome. And I did purchase my DNA test during Black Friday, so I got it much cheaper and obviously that's the best thing you could do is wait till it's on Black Friday. So my parents and my grandparents and my great grandparents and as far back as I know are all from Cuba. So I've always known that I'm just Cuban, but I always wanted to know what else I would be. I figured I'd be European and Spanish, but I'm literally 90% <laughs> European and Spanish. So I thought it was so interesting because I was expecting so much more of a mix. I just thought it was cool to also know like that I'm predisposed to getting type 2 diabetes apparently, which a lot of my family deals with that, so it actually is pretty accurate. And um, other things that I wasn't aware of, they predicted so many things about me based on my DNA, which is so crazy, because it told me that, for example, that I would have flat feet, and I do, or that I get motion sickness, which I do. It was weird how many things they knew about me based on my DNA that are accurate, that I was kind of just like, whoa. So moving on from Amazon, I wanted to mention another kind of random <laughs> favorite of last year. And it's going to continue being a favorite for the upcoming years because I honestly love this brand and this company. And it's MeUndies. And I know it's kind of weird to talk about underwear. <laughs> and I'm not going to show you the underwear, but by now we probably have like maybe 10 maybe 10 different prints of underwear from MeUndies. It's not just about the prints because yes, they do have really fun prints and like during, I I started ordering a new print every like season or every like holiday or any time like something exciting was coming up. We have a Harry Potter theme, we have Halloween themes, Christmas themes. I have so much fun picking the theme that I'm gonna send out to ourselves and my boyfriend and I can have like matching underwear. And I know it's so weird and silly but and kind of awkward to talk about but it is the most comfortable underwear that you will ever try so trust me you might want to check out me undies at least once just try it and then you might end up getting hooked like we did because honestly no underwear compares literally the most comfortable also me undies does sell other things outside of underwear they do have like onesies and actual clothes i do really like their bras and i ordered a t-shirt for jeremy from me undies and it is the most softest comfortable t-shirt it's not the cheapest thing it's a little pricey i mean to my belief of a t-shirt but for how often he wears it 
and how good of a t-shirt it is and how soft and comfortable it's kind of worth it so the next thing I wanted to go into is kind of like food and snacks and food one of the things I want to talk about is Lily's chocolate so right now the one I have is currently cookies and cream it's one of the newer ones this is like white chocolate but typically our favorite is the dark chocolate salted almond from Lily's but we also have tried like a bunch of their chocolates Lily's has the best chocolate that has no sugar it is sweetened with stevia I've used their baking chips, I've gotten their peanut butter cups, I've tried their chocolate almonds. I, we've tried so many different Lily's chocolates and they're all really good. But if you like dark chocolate and if you like salted dark chocolate, and if you like salted almond dark chocolate, definitely try it. It doesn't taste at all like you're missing out on the sugar part, but it is sweetened with stevia. So you don't have to feel like guilty about having chocolate because there's no sugar in it so <laughs> another food favorite I wanted to mention really quick shout out is to Universal Yums obviously if you watch the flipped then you know how much we love Universal Yums and how every month we travel the world where we get to try a box of snacks from a different country every month and it is I don't know one of the highlights of our month when it comes to <laughs> we enjoy it so much we love getting the new snacks and filming it and making it a whole thing and learning about the country because we do trivia we do like the facts and we learn about the country as we eat the snacks we've consistently been doing it throughout the year and we're going to continue doing it this year so kind of worth mentioning so universal yums if you're interested in trying it i'll link it down below you can use our affiliate link and you get five dollars off and then we get five dollars off and then we've been doing a lot of giveaways so every time that we get someone who signs up with our affiliate link and we get money to use in our own boxes, we've been giving those boxes away to people so they can try it. Just in December, we did a giveaway and we gave three boxes away to three winners. Obviously, we're big fans of Universal Yums and we just want to spread the fun of it. So, you know, worth mentioning and definitely something to include in my 2020 favorite. So I wanted to mention another food related favorite from last year that we discovered and we are gonna keep on probably having it all through this year as well is Capello's, I believe you call it, Capello's grain-free pizza, but specifically the pepperoni ones are favorite, but literally they're all good. The crust is made from almond flour. So it's grain-free, it's low carb, it makes you feel like you're being healthy, but in actuality, if it wasn't for the fact that I was trying to be healthier when I could eat this pizza, this pizza just tastes better than most oven pizzas. If you like thin crust pizza and you kind of like it on the crunchier side and not like a flimsy doughy pizza but more like a crunchy crackery pizza, this is the best. It's less greasy feeling, it doesn't make me feel sick afterwards, it's actually the kind of pizza that we split in half and we can still have like maybe a side of wings or a salad and still feel not stuffed. The crust is made all from ingredients that I recognize, unlike some of these pizzas where you read the ingredients and you're like, what am I eating? This actually feels like I'm eating real things that I understand and it's just such a well done pizza for being grain free. And it's not like we need to eat grain free, we don't have like a intolerance to gluten or anything. We do try to avoid it because it's, I don't think gluten is something that we all should be eating all the time anyways, just like dairy, I don't think we're supposed to be eating all the time. But you know, we still do because we don't need to not eat it. <laughs> But in this case, I prefer not having grain in my crust because this almond flour version is way better anyways. We have spent so much money on so many boxes of LaCroix sparkling water that for Christmas I decided to get us a sparkling water machine and is, or like a sparkling water maker. Every week we were going to the store and buying LaCroix, Topo Chico, Pellegrino, like all the sparkling waters, you're just like, couldn't live our lives without sparkling water. So now we can just take the basic water and make it sparkling. So technically that's an Amazon purchase that I will include down below. So everything else I'm gonna mention from now on are all like entertainment things. So platforms for streaming and movies and music and TV shows and stuff that's not like physical things that I can show you. So when it comes to streaming movies and TV shows, we have a lot of options. We have Amazon Prime, we have Apple TV, Hulu, we've even tried Vudu, Disney Plus. We have a lot of options, but Netflix continues to reign supreme when it comes to the go-to streaming platform that we always end up sticking to the most. I feel like we even have HBO Max, and I feel like we only watch certain things that we know about. For example, Disney Plus, we watch The Mandalorian, but we don't spend all our time on Disney Plus. We spend all our time on Netflix and then we go to Disney Plus to watch The Mandalorian. So I wanted to mention some of the best shows that I watched on Netflix last year that I 
binge watched and really enjoyed binge watching and I had a lot more time to binge watch last year so there's also that but I'm actually currently watching Bridgerton Bridge Bridgerton right is that how you say it that show I didn't think I was gonna like it I saw the first episode and I was kind of like I don't know but everybody kept talking about it and then I was like let me just try to see the second episode and now I'm hooked we just spent the winter break binge watching Schitt's Creek and we are literally just on the last episode right now like we're about to end it and I'm kind of sad because it was such a great show I didn't expect to fall in love with it that's the fun part about Netflix like you can try a show out see if you like it move on to the next one they just have a lot of good options and Schitt's Creek last year if there's one show that I can mention that both my boyfriend and I fell in love with it's Cobra Kai and I know a lot of people love that show too we're not alone in this but Cobra Kai is one of the ones that really sticks out and they just came out with season three literally last week I think it was or two weeks ago by now so we just finished binge watching that and Cobra Kai just gets better and better so if you have not given Cobra Kai a chance it's not like you need to be a Karate Kid fan to like Cobra Kai you just need to know it's gonna be kind of cheesy but it's still heartfelt and it's just, it's just a great show uh, I think we saw the first episode and we were just not sure about it and then we watched the next one and then we got hooked so there's two shows that last year I binge watched the most and they're kind of like more girlier shows I guess uh, one is Gilmore Girls I spent a good amount of time binge watching Gilmore Girls I could not stop I couldn't also believe that I had never really watched Gilmore Girls in the past when it first came out I used to watch an episode here and there but I never got into it honestly so worth binge watching such a great show I know it's an old show and obviously I'm sure a lot of people have watched it by now but I just think it's worth mentioning that Gilmore Girls is such a fun show to binge watch and on top of that I also wanted to mention the new girl I had always seen that show before but I had never really like watched the whole way through I went on a deep <laughs> A deep, deep uh, binge into New Girl. I could not stop, especially towards the last few seasons. I was just like glued to my laptop. And The Office, unfortunately, they took it out. So that was dumb of Netflix. But we binge watched during quarantine The Office and kind of ashamed to say that that was our first time really watching The Office. I mean, we had seen, again, some episodes here and there, but we had never really watched it all the way through. And although I still think the last two, two or three seasons are not as good as the first five seasons or something it was still a, such a fun show to just binge watch right through also i believe this was from last year as well love is blind kind of a guilty pleasure and i know a lot of people fell for it too but but that was kind of a fun one to watch i'm not even into shows like the bachelor and stuff like that but love is blind was just such a fun show so another platform that obviously reigns supreme obviously i'm not biased at all is youtube because youtube i spend the majority of my time between Netflix and YouTube. I'm not gonna go into mentioning all the channels on YouTube that I love because I think that's way too intense. I just wanted to mention one specific channel that gets a nice little shout out because honestly, if it wasn't for this channel, I don't know what I would have done being stuck at home without a gym or anything to look forward to when it comes to working out. I had no motivation to work out at home. I tried to do my own workouts and I would just put music and try to do my own thing and it wasn't working. And then I discovered EMK Fit, and she does these specific style workouts. They're 20 minute HIT workouts, which is like high intense interval training, where she gets a theme of music. So she'll focus on, for example, High School Musical, or Hamilton Music, or Ariana Grande, or whatever she decides that theme of the video will be. And then she will do these little they're not dances they're more like workout moves that kind of look almost like you're dancing i'm probably not doing a good job explaining it but basically it's just the funnest way that i have stayed motivated luckily thanks to her to actually move my butt <laughs> and i feel like her workout style is just something that i haven't really seen very often anywhere i think it's a very unique style she is great at what she does and if you're looking for a little motivation to work out at home the workout flies by i feel like i don't even I just don't even think about it and the next thing I know it's over and I'm like oh <laughs> and sometimes I end up doing a second one right after because they're just fun honestly she was probably one of the best YouTube channels that I discovered last year so EMK fit now going into movies there really wasn't a lot of good movies of 2020 which is kind of sad to say we really do love watching movies and we always look forward to the Oscars and we like to watch what movies win or what movies get recognized and then we go and we watch all those movies and 
we tend to try to keep up with the ones that really, I don't know, are worth mentioning. <laughs> there really wasn't, uh, I guess, an opportunity for a lot of movies to even come out last year, so it was a weird year. Considering all that, there are maybe a few I can mention, but off my head, it's kind of sad to say that I think 2020 was like the worst year for movies. I will mention one movie that I think is the one that sticks out the most for 2020, and it's a movie called Host. Not an easy movie to find. I think you have to look up online exactly what platform you can find it on. I'll put it down here if I figure it out. Um, this is a movie that was filmed during quarantine all through Zoom or FaceTime or whatever you call it. And it's like a short movie, so it's, I believe it's even less than an hour or it's an hour at most. It's a short horror, but it was all filmed during quarantine and it is such a clever, fun horror movie that I think really stood out to me because it was kind of like the first of its kind, I think. Like, obviously there's never been that before where we needed to film movies <laughs> away from each other. So the fact that they were able to create this, I mean, I don't even know how they did it because they filmed it during quarantine and I felt like while I was in quarantine, I watched it. So I don't even understand how that happens, but it is actually a fun watch. If you're into horror, it's a fun watch. I do remember one of the movies we watched that were really good. If you, again, if you like more like horror, I don't know if this is horror, it's more like thriller suspense is underwater that movie really stood out i thought that was a really good one that we watched earlier in the year another one that i remember that kind of stood out that we watched during the quarantine era was king of staten island it's a fun one again if i think of any more by the time that i'm editing this video i'll pop them in here and do like my honorable mentions but honestly kind of a bad year for movies like i think unless you think otherwise you can comment down below and let me know were there any good movies that we missed out on we always go to Redbox and are always looking for the next movies that pop up. And we're pretty much on top of all the platforms. And, uh, I don't know. The last category I wanted to mention is music. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, the only thing that I, that really sticks out to me when it comes to music is Dua Lipa. I've always been a pop fan ever since, you know, the 90s with Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and Jessica Simpson and NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. I mean, I grew up with that obviously, so I've always been a fan of pop. And Dua Lipa is kind of my new favorite pop artist. Her newest album is like pop with kind of like a disco-y vibe, then it also has like a little bit of like, it's like funky, but, but it's mostly pop. But like the kind of pop that's not, I don't know. I love her newest album. And right now my personal favorite is Love Again. And I'm kind of like always playing that song in my head and repeat and loving her new style of music that she kind of like has gone for this disco-y vibe about it. Maybe I'm not keeping up enough with music, honestly. <laughs> but if you have anything that you personally thought was the best of 2020, whether it was a movie, a TV show, a musician, a band, anything, you know, mention it down below. It could be an Amazon favorite. It could be something you discovered that you love to eat, a snack. Definitely comment down below and let me know because I'm curious to know what you think. And if any of my favorites were yours, that would be cool. So let me know. <laughs> Let's see what 2021 looks like. Toodaloo!